This video is the first lesson about Chinese tea lexicon. Learning the meaning of Chinese tea words help you getting insights into Chinese tea culture, tea art and tea knowledge in general. Moreover, if you plan to travel your, to China yourself, for example, together with us next spring on the Nano Shanti tour, this video will help you to communicate with vendors and tea farmers. So, let's get started! Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And if at any point of time you enjoy watching, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. So, let's speak about Chinese tea lexicon. But before doing that, let me give you some insights into why Chinese tea lexicon and not Japanese or Korean or any, any other language. So, you know that the, the roots of tea are actually in China. All the six categories of tea, white, green, yellow, up down to post-fermented tea, were actually invented in China. And also the different aspect of tea culture that you find in other countries like Japan, um, India or Korea have their roots in China. So, take for example the Chanoyu, the uh, Japanese tea ceremony. Also, the Japanese tea ceremony originally take inspiration in China. And uh, to have a little bit of insight into that, if you haven't done it yet, I really suggest to read uh, the book of tea, uh, written by, let me read it because I always forget the name, Kokatsu Okakura. And he also is a Japanese, of course, but he makes also a lot of references to uh, the uh, Chinese culture. If you think about the tea processing, the way that the green tea is steamed in Japan, or the way that green tea matcha is uh, wiped in Japan, all these techniques come originally from China. And if you think now at uh, the tea plantation in India, without Robert Fortune having uh, been gone in uh, uh, China for years trying to steal the botanic aspects of tea, the way to plant the tea plant and the way to process their leaves, today maybe tea wouldn't be in India as it is. So now, having, having understood this concept of uh, um, tea roots in China, you also probably now understand a little bit better why knowing the Chinese tea war helped me so much in understanding Chinese tea culture and tea culture in general. So I thought if it helped me, it should help also you. And I, yeah, I, I thought just starting a first lesson about this topic. And if you like it, I will do many more lessons in the future. There is so much to learn. So I say this is meant to be a series of lessons. It's up to you if you want it or not. And at every lesson, I will focus on a different topic and maybe teach you uh, five to ten words, depending on the topic. So, <laughs> let, me, let me give you, uh, let me do a short disclaimer. Of course, you know I'm not Chinese, that's quite obvious. I have a very strong accent in English, think about in Chinese, right? And uh, um, I also to say that I've never really attended uh, a Chinese course, except for a couple of free classes. So everything I've learned of Mandarin was actually self-taught. So, just by traveling in China and learning by myself. Also, I have to say that I have only focused on the spoken language, which means I can barely read just a few characters of Chinese. So, say that, given, given this poor knowledge of Chinese, nonetheless, when I am in China, I kind of can get along myself when I am without translator. And when we speak, when I speak with farmers, especially when it is about tea, I can get, they can really pretty much well understanding me. So I thought, despite my poor knowledge, let's give it a try. So my apologies to those of you that know Mandarin much better than me, especially for my pronunciation and my mistake. If you spot any mistake, please go ahead and write them in the description below. I will learn something and anyone else watching will learn something as well. All right, I took some note for this video because I have so many things to tell you that I, want, I don't want to miss any. Let's see where we are. 
Um, yeah, so before we really start with words, I have to, do, to give you a little bit of an introduction about Chinese language, because if we don't have a few, maybe a couple of aspects of Chinese the language, all the rest will be difficult, and even if you see the words I'm telling you, if you tell that out to the farmers, they won't understand you. So the first point is that uh, um, Chinese has no alphabet, as you know. Chinese is based on logogram, on uh, characters, and if you see a Chinese character, if you don't know what does that mean, you are not able to read it. It's different than English. If I see a word in English and I don't know the meaning, I'm able to read it. So this is also probably why I didn't decide really to start uh, uh, learning the written Chinese, because I was more interested in the communication, if you want, in the way a child learned the language. So now, um, if you take... Uh, let me see. There are other ways to write Chinese. You can write it, of course, by character, but there is a way that uh, is called pinyin, and pinyin literally means spell sound. So actually, it is a way, it is a romanization of the Chinese language. This means that if you take, for example, these uh, uh, charters here, this means mother. In pinyin, this is written ma ma. So if you see mama, you are able to read it. If you see those two characters, you are not able to read it. So in this series of lessons, we will only use pinyin. All right. Another very crucial aspect of Chinese is that Chinese is a tonal language. What does it mean? It means that if you don't pronounce the words with the right intonation, with the right pitch, they won't understand you. Now, um, it is also even more complex than that. If you take a single word, that word can be pronounced um, in four different ways in Chinese. There are four different tones, and each of, each of that uh, tone has a different meaning. But it doesn't mean that every word has a meaning with all four tones. And also the other way around, if you have a word pronounce it with a specific tone, it doesn't mean that it has only one meaning, it can have multiple meanings. So you have to understand the discussion through the context. The characters, however, those are unique. So let's make an example, I'll try my best. So just, it's important that you get the concept of tones, because if you don't get that, and if you don't know which tones are we speaking about, is it just difficult. So let's take the word that we already said, ma. All right, so now I'll try myself. Usually I use my hands to help myself in pronouncing the words in the different tones, right? So take the word ma. If I say the word ma, I do with the, with the finger, I do like this, so a very high pitch. This means mother. We have already seen that. If I use a rising tone, ma, this means sesame, like sesame seed. If I use a falling and rising tone, ma, that means horse. And last but not least, if you say it in a falling tone, ma, that means, for example, um, I've written it here, curse, right? Like if you curse against someone. So, some years ago, when I was traveling in China, I did a short video about the different tones with the Chinese. So I'm going to show you that to you now, so that you can can hear from a mother, mother language how the different tones are pronounced. So, the word happy. Juan. And the other three words? Juan. No, sir. Juan. And the last. Juan. Okay. And does every Chinese word have a four different pronunciations? No, no, no. Does every word. Like give, you know, I give, give you something. Yeah, yeah. In Chinese, it's gay. 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 Shirt. Okay. Just only this pronunciation. Ah, so the word gay has no other pronunciation. Yes. No gay, no gay, no gay, just a gay. Ah, everything clear? All right. Thank you. All right, I assume that that was a little bit more clear than my intonation. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, another important aspect of the tones is that you have. Uh, two ways of writing the tone of a word. So if you take, for example, the word ma, as we said before, if you put uh, a number like right after the 
the, the two letters, it tells you which tone you have to pronounce. So if you have a one, it is the first tone, ma. If you have a two, it is the second, ma, and so on. And in addition to that, you can, uh, or actually in substitution to that, instead of writing numbers, you can write accent. So if you have a straight line, that is the first tone. If you have a rising accent, is the second. If you have a falling and rising, is the third. And if you have a falling, is the fourth. So say that, let's start finally with the T lexicon. And which is the first word that I want to tell you, guess what? The word T. So the word T in Chinese is say cha, which is the second tone. Now, what is interesting about the word T is actually if you look at the whole word, the word is more or less divided in two halves. There is a half of the word that pronounce the word T more or less like the Chinese do in Mandarin, cha. Uh, for example, in Japan. There are other, uh, or in Portuguese, for example, there are also other places like Italy, uh, Germany, uh, England, the US, where you speak it out like the word T. Yeah? It's kind of similar. In English it's T, in German it's T, in Italian it's T. It's yeah, very similar. Now, where all this comes from, look at one thing. If you look in the Chaozhou dialect, Chaozhou is the place where the uh, Danzong Ulong comes from, the word T there is pronounced de, which is the first tone. So you see that actually even the word T is coming from China, but it's coming actually from dialects. All right, there is much more to say about the words of T, but I won't now keep on. And now we start with the first topic that I was to co want to cover in this first lesson. It is the different shades of T. So as you know, there are six different types of T. Let's look now how to pronounce those different six types in Chinese and I will tell you also a little bit more information of those words uh, while we go through it. So the first one that we want to say we start with white tea. White tea is pronounced by cha which is two rising tones. Now the word by is uh, means white so it means white tea. The word white is used also in many other um, in the name of many other teas in China that not necessarily have to do with white tea. For example, the uh, Anji Bai Cha, which is a, a green tea. There is also some white tea that has the word white, like the white peony, Bai Mudan. And there is also, for example, uh, some rock tea that has the word white in it, like Bai Jiguan. So you see that the word white itself is an important word to recognize because you will encounter it in uh, many different uh, contests in the world of tea. The next tea I want to speak about is green tea. Green tea is said lü cha, so lü is the um, fourth tone. And uh, I won't say anything else about that. The word lü, you can find it. For example, there is a special kind of very rare um, ishin ore that is called uh, the uh, lü, ni, lü ni, which means uh, green mud or green clay, if you want but otherwise you don't find it very often. So, then we have uh, uh, yellow tea. Yellow tea is said huan cha, which is two, again, two rising tone. The word huan, which means yellow, is again fine often in Chinese. Let me give you an example. Um, then, when you process poor tea, or sometimes also dan song, you also use, um, you also pick some leaves that are a little bit too large, do not oxidize very well, and they remain a little bit in the mao cha, they remain a little bit yellow. Those leaves are called uh, huan pian. Uh, I think pian is the fourth tone, let me check. Uh, yes, so huan pian. Huan pian, which means like uh, uh, yellow pieces, are those uh, particular leaves. So you see that the word yellow comes up in different contents. There is more than that. I just want to give you some example. We will see more in the future. And now we come to the only variety that is called in the same way in English or in Italian and in German as in um, Chinese. And this is oolong. Although the word uh, um, oolong is actually uh, written in ping slightly differently, so the word u means black and the word long means uh, dragon. So actually oolong means black dragon. Now the 
Wu as black, you don't find it very often in other Chinese tea words, but the word uh, long for sure. Think about longing, dragon well. So the word dragon appears also in the most famous green tea. Good, then what we have else? Then we go to black tea. Black tea in Chinese is called Hong Cha. Both are two second tones. A lot of second tones actually in the Chinese tea name. The word Hong means red. So, as we have said many times, black tea in Chinese is actually called red tea because the infusion is actually red, it's not black. Now, the word Hong is again found often, very, very often in naming of tea, of course, of black teas, but like uh, Qim and Hong Cha, for example, but also in other contexts. For example, is uh, the Hong Ni is a very famous and important Yixin or Yixin clay. All right, now we come to the last one, uh, which is Hei Cha. Hei Cha is again dark tea or post-fermented tea. It means actually, again, black tea. So you see that in the naming of words, there are two types of black. There is Wu, which is like in Oolong, that is a black dragon. And then you have Hei Cha, which means black tea, but they have two different kinds of black. All right, so I want just to mention that uh, we have these six tea categories and we have always, you always read about uh, that the categories are six and the difference between the six categories is mainly, if not, if, yeah, I would say mainly the processing of the leaves. Now, tea culture and in particular the tea agricultural aspect have evolved over the years and especially in the last year we have seen quite some revolution in tea. So that as of today, I would say that, that we have seven types of tea and not six. However, this is a topic for another video and for now uh, I just leave it as it is, but start thinking about it, why today we have uh, a seventh way of processing tea that was not really recognized just uh, 30 years ago. All right, so we are eating towards the end of these first lessons. Uh, we have learned seven new words, right? We have uh, uh, cha, Tea, then we have white tea, bai cha, lü cha, green tea, huan cha, yellow tea, oolong, which is oolong, then we have hong cha, which is black tea, red tea in Chinese, and then we have hei cha, which is dark tea, black tea in Chinese. In the future, I would like to give you more and more and more insights in the Chinese tea lexicon and you will understand so much more, really, it helped me so much. If you're interested in uh, having this, uh, in hearing this lesson and in watching this lesson, please go ahead and write it in the comment below and I will prepare similar thematic lessons uh, like this one. If you made it to this point, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if this is the first time you're watching our video. Thank you very much and I'll see you at the next lesson. Bye-bye.